Hey everybody, so pleased to have you join us for a Tuesday talk where we look at the Word of God and it's one of the most exciting times for me in the week being able to um, share with you some of the great truths in the Word of God which um, not just inform you, not just give you information and help you to understand but help you to grasp truths that um, transform what is happening on the inside. That's one of the most powerful things about the Bible. It goes beyond any other book. Any other book you can read and give information but the Word of God contains in it the power for its fulfillment. If it says something, there's actually the anointing in it for it to happen. And so that's the exciting thing that we can come to the Word of God, we can receive what it says and know that there's empowerment in that for, it, um, for our fulfillment. So we're going to dive right in. We've got a lot to share, um, but I'm going to just keep moving far, you know, really fast. So if, if I'm moving too fast for you and you need to pause, you do that so you can get the Word of God out, check the Scriptures, or you can watch it and then go back and watch it again um, because I really encourage you to um, really in, engage in this tr and what we're sharing and let it get right into your heart. You know, we've been talking about soul health and, and the health of our inner man. And this, the Word of God actually is food for us. It says in Timothy, um, Paul said that the Word of God nourishes our inner man. So it's there to provide strength and life to us. So we're going to go in. Um, and I, I, last week... I shared from um, from Galatians, and this week I'm going to do it from Romans, Romans chapter 4. Um, so let me just switch over here, so let's see if you can... All right, this week I'll be using a lot my iPad a fair bit, going through a lot of scriptures, stopping and, and, and cutting and pasting from different pages, and just looking at Romans 4 in great detail. And what we're going to look at is there's a word, called, a Greek word, um, I trust I've spelled it right, legizomai. Legizomai. Um, and in English, um, if you saw this in English, you might see the word reckon or credit, maybe. Um, it's funny sometimes when we use um, English words, and like the word reckon, and it's a, very, it's a word used a lot in the Bible, so in my translation, New American Standard, it's used a number of times by Paul. Um, but the word reckon isn't a word that I use very often in English. You know, like we, we might use it in the sense, I reckon it's going to rain this afternoon. I reckon, uh, you know, but that's, that's not actually the use here. That's not even the proper English use. That's a, an alternative use. The word reckon is, um, so it's, it's strange sometimes to be able to grasp things. It's not just being able to grasp the, the Bible principle, the Bible truth behind it, but also having to understand that the word that often it comes to is not something we're totally familiar with. So that, that means that we've got some, um, some distances to jump and, and to get over before we can fully grasp this truth. So what we're going to do is look at this word in detail. Why is it so important? What's this word? You know, you think legizomai. <laughs> just even to say it, legizomai. If you can, can I just tell you something? If you can actually get the truth of this word legizomai, it will make a huge difference to how you walk in your life with God. It is actually one of the greatest truths, but it's a bit of a strange one because it, it's... So now, what is this concept, legizomai? So can we go together to um, Romans 4? Um, well, we'll jump out, of the, jump out of the Amplified Bible because that would be a bit interesting. And um, I'm going to use a translation called the New English Translation. Let's head to Romans 4. And we'll go in verse 1. Um, and I'm going to try and have my Bible open beside me as well. So... I'm double dipping at the moment, enjoying the word on the iPad and the word in page before me, Romans 4. Um, what I want us to do, let's just read through. And um, actually, I, I will switch it back to my New American because it matches my Bible, New American. And um, let's read from verse 1. All I want you to do in this one is that don't worry about too much. Don't, don't try and... Um, uh, get hold of all the all the what Paul's saying here. First of all, I just want you to look, do something with me. Look for the word reckon, the word credit or reckon. Um, if you've got your own Bible, you might want to get it open and go through and just highlight, circle or mark um, whatever's happening. So let's start with verse 1. What then shall we say that Abraham, our forefather, according to the flesh, has found? For if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. Okay, here we go. Verse 3. We're gonna, I'm going to count them. I want you to see them. 
For what does the scripture say? And Abraham believed God and it was reckoned to him as righteousness. So there's one. Now to the one who works, his wage is not reckoned as a favor, but what is due. But to the one who does not work, but believes in him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is reckoned as righteousness. Just as David also speaks of the blessing upon the man to whom God reckons righteousness apart from works. Blessed are those whose lawless deeds have been forgiven, whose sins have been covered. Blessed is the man whose sin the Lord will not take into account. Let me just check here for verse 8. Account, you can add that to the legismai. It's the same word. Verse 9. Is this blessing then upon the circumcised or upon the uncircumcised? For we say faith was reckoned. Um, I'm losing count. Is that six? Re- faith was reckoned to Abraham as righteousness. Verse 10. For how then was it reckoned while he was circumcised or uncircumcised? Not while circumcised, but while uncircumcised. And he received the sign of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness of the faith, which he had while uncircumcised, that he might be the father of all who believe without being circumcised, that righteousness might be reckoned to them. Um, we, we've just got down from verse 3 to verse 11. Um, did, I, did I count 8? Did you count better than me? Um, I don't know. I, I see, Beck, you're watching. Can you, can you, get, can you confirm that we had, I had 8 there? That's um, really cool to have you online with us. Um, verse 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 times in um, just that short passage. Is it really that important? Yes, it is a key foundation to how our faith works. It's a key foundation for how God worked salvation in us and he gave us Abraham as an example of how this all works. Um, so let's go back now and unpack this because if we can understand how it works and especially if we understand how it works in Abraham, that actually translates not just to how we got saved but how we live out our salvation. In fact, if you... um. Can we just skip down to um, verse 22? Therefore, therefore it was also reckoned, it was reckoned to him as righteousness. Another one. Now, not verse 23. Now, not for his sake only was it written that it was reckoned to him, but for our sake also. Um, let me see if I can get that scripture up a little bit higher. For our sake also. To whom it will be reckoned as those who believe in him who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead. Can I just see something? But for our sake also to whom it will be reckoned. Now, um, um, let me not just, sometimes the English can get you confused. The word will can mean two things. Um, it can be future or it can mean certainty. In this situation, it is actually talking about certainty. All right? It means for sure the actual this is the understanding the greek word behind it is certainty not future so it's not saying to him um who um sorry let's see it's not saying to him who in the future will be reckoned but it's saying to whom it will most certainly it will surely maybe you can put that word it surely will be reckoned as those so it's talking about the confidence and so what paul's saying here is this is not just a story about abraham this is not just a story about what happened to him. It's actually your story. It's your story. It's for our sake also. Do you see that in verse 24? Our, for our sake also to whom we can surely be reckoned as those who believe in him who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead. In other words, Paul said, this is our story. This becomes um, something very true and important to us. So let's go back to the start of this chapter because if you can understand this word legismai in terms of Abraham, you will then understand legismai in terms of you. And if you can understand legismai in terms of you, it will give you so much confidence and boldness and assuredness when you walk your faith out today. See, what, what happens is Jesus has done things for us on the cross. We all know that. This is sort of basics 101 Christianity. When I get saved, when I come to Jesus, let me just take a step back here. When I get saved, I am not at that point getting Jesus to die for me. We understand that. Jesus died 2,000 years ago. When I say, Jesus, I believe in you, and Jesus, I trust you, at that point, I am saved, but it's not at that point that my salvation is worked. 
2,000 years ago, everything needed for my salvation was accomplished. Everything required for my salvation was finished in the work of Jesus on the cross and his resurrection. Then what has, so, so it's all there. It, everything to do with salvation has been pre-bought, if you like. It's been done. My job is to receive it and to um, empower it into my life, to, to take it from something that's available to something that I'm experiencing and enjoying. Um, let me just look at um, a scripture here just to show you this, because um, this is sort of the crux of what Legizomai is all about. So, Second Corinthians... Um, I'll just get it from here. Um, all right, let's Second Corinthians five. We'll, I'll do it on the um, the iPad so that you can follow along with me. Second Corinthians five, and we'll read from verse eighteen. Now all these things are from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ. All right, you see that? That's past tense. All these things are from God who reconciled, past tense, us to himself through Christ. The, my sin kept me apart from God. My sin was a barrier between my, me and God. It, it brought judgment. It, it was a stain on my life that was um, pulling judgment to me. When Jesus died on the cross, he dealt with that sin. The barrier between me and God was dealt with. But it says, so it's past tense. He has reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Namely, that God was in Christ. Namely, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them. And he has committed to us, what? The word of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ as though God were entreating through us. We beg you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. Um, so it's not saying, oh, we, we've got to deal with this sin. What, we've got to say, what we're saying is, oh, the sin is dealt with. The reconciliation is done. Our work is to bring the message of reconciliation and enable people to um, embrace and find the truth of the reconciliation. So they become reconciled. They've already been reconciled in terms of what Jesus has done, but now we need to take the message of reconciliation to people. Um, when I go to people, I'm telling them, Jesus has already forgiven your sins. He's dealt with your sins. My message to you is you need to, by faith, embrace that. Trust in the work that Jesus has done. I'm not telling you that you need to get something done for your salvation. I'm saying you need to activate, to work out the, the, the salvation through your faith. Bible says in the book of Romans, if I believe with, um, if, I, if I confess that Jesus is Lord and believe that God raised him from the dead, I will be saved. If I, what am I doing? I'm not making those things happen. I'm bringing the truth of those things to me and suddenly I'm being transformed. Now, that just doesn't stop at salvation. There's everything that God ha has for you, everything that God planned for you to live and to enjoy in terms of your nature and your fullness of wholeness and health and, and um, your spiritual health, your emotional health, your um, the peace in your mind, um, your, um, your financial blessing, your ability to, to walk in all the fruit and giftings of the Holy Spirit, the love, joy, peace, patience, the, the nine fruit, all the, the giftings and the abilities of the Holy Spirit, they are all given to you and made available through the work of Jesus on the cross. So it's not just your salvation, it's everything. It's the same way that we have a message of reconciliation that enables us to, to take what Jesus has done and activate it now. We must take that same process and find out what Jesus has done for us and activate it now. We're taking that which has already been accomplished and working it into us now. What is that process of finding out and determining and and not just in a, from a mind point of view, not just, um, not just um, so I've got information up here. No, what, it, it's so I can embrace it and, and get the revelation of it and the truth and the power of it. As I said, right at the start, when you get to know the Word of God, it actually it has the, empower, the power in it for its fulfillment. 
So what am I trying to do? That, that process of understanding, getting a revelation of what Jesus has done and has accomplished and which is mine and that which I can know and see what has been put to my account is called legizomai. That is, the, that is the, what we're talking about. So can we go back to um, Romans chapter 4 and let us unpack this word legizomai. Let's see what it is. And to do that, we've got to understand a little bit about Abraham. To, um, Paul took everything back to Abraham. So, and why is that? Well, he actually said, um, verse 11, look at verse 11. He received the sign of circumcision and a seal of the righteousness of the faith which he had while uncircumcised. Talking about Abraham, that he might be the father of all who believe without being circumcised. Um, and that's you and that's me and that's everybody that gets saved. Um, that, did you see what that said? That Abraham might be the father of them. Um, go down verse 17. As it is written, a father of many nations have I made you. Um, that's referenced to back to um, a scripture you know, when God um, declared it to, to, to Abraham, I think, let's go back. Genesis 17, I'm pretty sure it'll be there. Genesis 17, and um, yeah, there it is, verse 5. God is giving him the promise. This is before he's had a child. Of, you know, he's had um, Ishmael, but this is before he and Sarah have had the child that was promised, that God said would come to them. And that is... Um, he promised him and said, No longer shall your name be called Abraham, but you shall be called Abraham, for I will make you the father of a multitude of nations. Now he's prophesying to him not just about um, Isaac and, and the Jewish people and Israel that was to come. He's talking about a prophetic word that Abraham would become the father of nations, not just the Jews, the father of all nations. And this is what Paul picks up on. So how did Abraham become the father of all the nations? And how did he become my father? Why He's my daddy. You know, who, why, why am I like him? Well, it, it happens because something that happened in chapter 15. And um, Paul refers to this in Romans, but we'll just jump straight back to Genesis 15. And um, let's read it from verse 5. And this is so powerful. He took him outside... This is Abraham. Took Ab God took Abraham outside and said, Now look toward the heavens and count the stars, if you're able to count them. In other words, get a picture. I love um, Terry Seville Foy. She says, you know, she talks about vision books and, and, and uh, vision boards and, and putting things before you. She said, you know, here was God saying, Abraham, I want you to visualize the promise. I want you to see how big it is and how great it is. I want you to stand out there and see. You know, God, God's a, a God of illustrations. I love Jesus, you know, it, you know. He said, you know, he, he used illustrations and parables all the time. He helped people to picture things. So God did this to Abraham, and he said, verse 6, in response to this, you know, so he said to Abraham, so shall all your descendants be. And verse 6, Abraham said, uh, then it said, then he, that's Abraham, then he believed in the Lord, and he reckoned it to him as righteousness. Guess what? There's the word reckon. Now, Obviously, Old Testament, different language. Hebrew as opposed to the Greek of the New Testament. So it can't be legizomai, but it is actually of the same nature, the very same kind of word. It carries the same meaning. What is this word reckon? He reckoned it to him as righteousness. So let's actually take a step back here. Um, Genesis 15, 6, and let's just look at the Hebrew, what's happened here. So Abraham has suddenly had something reckoned to him. Um, and you've got, to, you've got to put aside the old Aussie, oh, I reckon this and I reckon that. Nothing to do with that. Reckon is a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an accounting term. It's a financial term in, in one sense. Um, in fact, let's look at Leviticus 27. We'll just jump straight there. Um, Leviticus 27 and what verse? 18. Uh, let's just read it. You don't have to understand too much. Let's see how the word is used. If he consecrates his field after Jubilee, however, then the priest shall calculate 
the price for him proportionate to the years that are left unto the year of Jubilee, and it shall be deducted from your valuation. This is a, a, a financial pe- uh, instruction. He looks at a field, how much is it worth? It's about real estate, it's about cost. Then the priest shall calculate. It's all about the cost, it's about the value, it's about an amount. But guess what? The word calculate is the word reckon, the Hebrew word reckon. A little bit further down, and um, you've got that again in verse 23. The priest shall calculate for him the amount of your valuation. Again, shall reckon, shall count it up. It's, a, it's, a, it's an accounting term. It's a, it's a term to do with your costs and your value. So when we go back to Genesis, and it says, Then he believed in the Lord, and God reckoned it to him as righteousness. You, got, you can look at this word in the terms of accounting. Um, let me just, it, it means what, when someone takes a set of figures and they write them down carefully and they sum, uh, total them up and they get a sum, it's the, it's the ledger book sort of approach. I don't know whether anyone used ledger books before, you know, spreadsheets on computers, but, you know, spreadsheets on computers were once spreadsheets on paper and um, people had the, the rows and the columns and they would have a column there and people would write them you've seen them some of the old movies you know sitting there writing in the ledger and and um, some guy would be sitting there on the bottom totaling it all up and um, that's the word legizomai and that's the word hebrew word here for that means reckon it's about doing things exactly writing them down putting setting your mind to it um let me just um show you so that you sort of see that hey i'm not just sort of making this uh, stuff up because it suits me um Let's just go to verse 3, Romans 4. Um, down here, you'll see... Um, um, I'm going to press on the number... Oops, you can't see because I haven't got the um, scripture up there. <laughs> down the bottom here, you can see down the bottom. That's the, um, the, the scripture in the King James Version with the, the numbers. Each Greek word was numbered each and given its own particular number so they could go to a dictionary based on that. And we'll see count, it was counted unto him. There you can see the King James is counted. And um, let me just bring this up. Can you see that? Um, very top, this is the Greek word 3049, which is the word legizomai. Legizomai. You can sort of see it right there at the top in the blue. Legizomai. And um, uh, it comes from out of Logos and to reckon, impute, and number. Now let's have a look at this first dictionary. Actually, the verb legizomai means to put together with one's mind, to count, to occupy oneself with reckonings or calculations. It's all about put, counting and, and setting your mind to getting things exact. Why does that matter? Well, because we are told that this is what God did. He looked at, at um, Abraham. He looked at Abraham. And if you looked at Abraham's register, okay, so... Um, if, if you said, what is Abraham if someone is keeping a record of Abraham's sin? If you looked at the ledger of Abraham's life and someone was being very exact and saying, you, you sinned here, you lied here, you cheated here, you had a proud thought here, you disobeyed here, you neglected this here, you were angry here and, uh, and, and hateful here, you were violent here. Can you imagine a ledger of your life? Don't try, please don't actually imagine that. I don't want. I don't want to think about an alleger of my life. I can't. I can't imagine the, if someone was that exact. If someone and, and and all those things in dot point. Um. And imagine that Abraham had all those things on him, and yet God comes to him and says, "I'm looking at your ledger, I'm looking at your life, and I'm doing it exactly." And I'm looking at point by point. I've got it. I've done it all totaled up. So can you imagine if God came to you? you know, think pre-Jesus days, because we sort of we know the end story already. But pre-Jesus, God says, I looked at all your life and I've added it all up, and this is what you're headed to. It'll be pretty, pretty terrible. But imagine he says, I've added it all up, and it says, Oh, you're righteous. You haven't done anything wrong. You're righteous you're actually totally clean. There's nothing in that column of negative. It's only positive. You are righteous. 
you're like, no, I don't think so. <laughs> That's not my ledger. How does that work? Because you know, ledgers are all about exactness. You can't make them up. That You can't pretend. Um, it's not what you want to be in there. It's what is in there. Do you understand? Is it a ledger is, is what's written. You can't just sort of pretend. Um, if you go to the bank and you say, um, you know, how much is in my bank account? What is the balance? Um, they're not going to look at you and say, uh, uh, you're a nice sort of good looking fella. I think um, there's a, a million dollars in there. <laughs> I go, oh, ho, ho, ho. that's not going to happen, is it? It's not, not, they're going to look at it and there's going to be a figure. It's not gonna, they're not going to tell me up or below. They're just saying, here's the figure. This is the amount that's in there. Because it's all been calculated. It's an exact amount that has come to you from this time. Um, all my sin is an exact figure that's sitting there. But then Abraham, God said, I'm going to look at your calculation and I'm going to do this. Abraham equals righteous. How could that happen? How could, how could, um, how could God ignore all the sin and give him the, um, the answer, you're righteous? Well, it comes back to, let's go back to Genesis 15. excited here so let's go back to Genesis 15 what does it say then Abraham then he believed in the Lord um, do you know that's the very first time in the Bible the word for believed is used I was, I was amazed when I found that out I was like no you know like it's, it's 15 chapters in 15 chapters into Genesis and, and, and the word believed hasn't actually happened. This is the first time. First time this word comes into play, it says then Abraham believed God or Abraham believed in the Lord and it was reckoned to him as righteousness. It tells us something. And this is what Paul picks up on in, in Romans 4. He says there's a clue. There's a clue. That's why Abraham was called the father of all the nations because Abraham did something. He believed God and God was able to change and transform his reckoning his accounting system he was able to switch over how could he do that how could he do that because it was based on something that was going to happen something that was going to happen that god could see in the future that god spoke of as if it was already happening today i won't i can't t take time to get into that but that's one of the most powerful things about god such there's only one person one, one there's only one one person in the universe one person that's been god who can speak to the future with absolute confidence because he has the power to make it happen and he has the total trustworthiness and faithfulness to get it done. And so he was going to do this transfer where he was going to take all of Abraham's sin and put it onto the account of Jesus. And he was going to take the account of Jesus, all the righteous things that Jesus had done with no sin, and he was going to put that righteousness on our account. He was going to switch the ledgers. And so when God was looking at Abraham, he could look forward and see what Jesus was going to do. And he was able to make this declaration to Abraham and say, Abraham, guess what? You're righteous. I see righteousness when I look at you. And um, th this wasn't, you, um, this is a really important point here. Sometimes what people imagine happened is, okay, we, we've got two ledgers and he, t and, and my real ledger is here. And it's my sin. Do you know what I mean? And it's the, all my sins. And God just puts in front of the camera. You know, like how you can, I, I could do it here. Um, you know, I, I could, you know, hold my Bible up and you, you see me, but suddenly I hold my Bible up and now you only see the Bible. But you know what? I'm still here. <laughs> I haven't gone anywhere. I'm just here. There's the Bible, but I'm still here. All right, there's the Bible. Some people think that's how righteousness works. I'm still here. I've got sin. All my sin is written on me. And God just simply puts Jesus in front and he says, okay, I see Jesus, therefore I'm speaking to you and saying you're righteous. But you know what? We all know that behind the scenes, you're still um, a, a sinner. But that's not how it worked. This is not one ledger in front of another ledger. This is an exchange of ledgers. This is an exchange. So vital. Legizomai says, this is what you have. This is not what someone else has. It's what you have. When it has been counted to you, when it's been reckoned to you, it's actually in 
your account. Let me just ask you a question here. If I gave you a million dollars and put it into your account, are you a millionaire? And um, some people say, well, I think so. Did you really put it in my account? Um, but other people will be like, oh, well, I'm sort of a millionaire. You know, it's, it's, it's really, um, you know, it's, been, it's a gift to me. It's not actually my money. You know, it was given to me, but it's in my account. It's, it's in, oh, so they're sort of saying, I'm not really a millionaire because it's not my money, but it's been put into your account. Well, you say, but I didn't earn it. I didn't, um, I didn't run a business. I didn't sell anything. It's just been given to me. Well, millionaire just means you have a million dollars. doesn't mean how you got it. doesn't mean whether you even deserve it. It doesn't mean whether you're being a good person and deserve to have a million dollars or what. It's just who you are. You're a millionaire because you have a million dollars in your account. And this is what I want to tell you. You're righteous because Jesus has put his righteousness in your account. You have, you've, you've been given an, a righteous account. Um, how, how could that happen? Um, how could he do that? He had to be an exchange. He had to take my sin and put it on himself. And so to do that, let's just oops. Let's just look at 2 Corinthians 5 17. Or 5 20, actually. It's the very end of that um, passage that we looked at before about recon ministry of reconciliation. And then it says in verse 21, got the verse there eventually. Amen. I see a people, couple of people. Um, Commenting here, I think Buddy's quieting down. Isn't it good being able to do Bible studies at home and have your dog barking agreement in the background? Um, I'm, I'm sure that Buddy's just saying, amen, I'm really excited. That's how I'm hearing what he's been doing. Verse 21, he made him who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf that we might become the righteousness of God in him. He made Jesus who knew no sin to be sin that he might make him, might be, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. My sin ledger was put onto Jesus. Jesus' righteousness was put into my account. Not put in front of me, put to my account. He actually wrote it to my account. The, it's, a, a, it, it's an accounting term. He has put it onto my account. It belongs to me. Why, how could I get that? I don't earn it. I don't deserve it. I deserved sin. Yeah, my sin is a deserved account. See, let's go back now to Romans 4. Two ways that you can get things in your account. Um, um, okay, verse 4. Now to the one who works, his wage is not reckoned as a favor. You know, when, when, when I work for my money and I, you know, if I go down and I say I'm going to dig a field and, and dig this ditch, and if I dig this ditch this deep, this long, the guy said, well, I'll pay you $100. Good. I dig the ditch. He gives me $100. I say thank you, but I don't say thank you like you're doing me a favor. I've done him a favor. I've dug this ditch, and he is now just recognizing the labor that I've done, and it's an exchange, my work for his money. You know, if, if, if he didn't have the money, I wouldn't do the work. If um, <laughs> he, he's got the money, but he wants, he wants a ditch dug, he, he needs that. You know, we, it's an exchange. Um, so his wage is not reckoned as a favor. My sin is on my account, and it's not a gift. I earned it. I am a sinner by my actions. I am a sinner by who I am and what I do. And so I am a sinner. It's on my account. Jesus has exchanged that and taken, and it's put the sin onto his account. I say, Jesus, you didn't deserve that. You're not a sinner. But he, how, how, did you get my, how did you get my sin? He said, not by works, not by works, See, verse 5, but to the one who does not work, but believes, but believes, his faith is reckoned as righteousness. It's exchanged to him through the process of faith. Jesus says, I trusted God. I believed God that he would save you. I believed God that he would rescue you. I believed, according to Isaiah 53, that I would become your sin. And that sin was transferred to my account and my faith, not my works, not my actions, has enabled that to come to me. So by, because Jesus was able to receive my sin upon himself, my sin went to his account. But my trust in God means that his righteousness has come to my account. It's, it's there. 
not by my works, not by my actions, not by my, uh, my goodness or my, um, not by who I am. It's simply by this. It's by the fact that Jesus has done it for me and I've trusted in him and it's come to my account. Legizomai is understanding what is in my account, how it came to be there and what, 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 how, how I hold on to it and use it. It's not because of my, um, who I am. It's because of what Jesus has done. Now, how does this work in the, in the practical world? Let, let me give you an example of something. Let's say that I gave you um, a gift card. I, I bought a gift card, a Coles Meyer gift card, and um, you know, and you're actually allowed to go out and, and spend it. And um, so I give you the card, and you know how gift cards work. That that's basically like a credit card, except or they're more like a debit card. There's so much money registered on them, and as you use that money, it gets lower and lower until eventually you you do the last transaction and you've used up all the credit that is on that card. There's an a, it's credited, it's reckoned on there how much there is. And if you went out and I said, oh, I give you the credit card and I say, go enjoy yourself and you walk to the shops, but if you, what, what is the, the, the problem if that's the story? You just turn from me and you go straight to the shops. What should you ask before you go to the shops? What is the, what, what do you need? You need to say how much credit is on the card. Why? Because that tells you then how much you can use it for, what you can do. So let's say you don't ask. Let's say you've just, you know, oh, well, it's a nice credit card. I'll just go and do whatever it's on, it's on there. And um, you go and you buy, um, you go into you know, a fancy store and you buy a pair of shoes. And you go to the, the checkout and... Um, and they put the, the card through, and it goes, beep, boop. No, oh, and you go, oh, I picked too fancy a pair of shoes. Um, I will say, can I just leave these here? You go back, and you go find the bargain bin, and, um, and then there's a bargain bin, and $5 pair of shoes, and you put it on, they go, beep, beep. Oh, good, I got those. You get another pair, beep, beep. And then after four pairs of shoes, suddenly it goes, boop, boop, it's not working anymore. So you go, oh, well, I've run out of money, because how, how did you know you've run out of money? How did, how did, what told you that you'd run out of credit? Not the credit card, not your legizomai, but simply because somebody at the other end says you can't have that. Um, it's not going through the system. Sorry, that's the end. You have presumed because you have nothing coming and it doesn't respond that that's, okay, the card's empty. But what happens if I told you that this card has $1 million on it? Now, first of all, I've got to be a multi, you know, at least a millionaire to be able to do that. And I've got to be honest and faithful and truthful. You've got to be able to trust me that what I'm saying is true. If I'm a prankster or if I'm poor, if I have no money, uh, then you're not going to believe me. But if you know that I am both wealthy and honest, and I say to you, this card has $1 million dollars. You're not putting your faith in the card. You're putting your faith in me who's told you what's on the card. Do you, do you get that? Let me just, um, just a little bit, it's sort of in line, but so just enjoy this slight deviation. Um, I want us to go back to Genesis 15. Remember that word I said was the, the very first time this word is used in the Bible? Then he believed in the Lord. Um, let me just show you that word, believed, and it was counted. Um, believed here is the Hebrew word, number 539 in the Hebrew dictionary. Um, and I'm going to skip down to the dictionary down here. Oh, not that one. Um, it's the, word, the complete word study dictionary by, by Zoda Hardy's. Um, actually, my favorite dictionary for Greek and Hebrew words, Zoda Hardy's, um, the, the word study Bible, uh, dictionary. This is the word. Can you see it here? A verb, a mom, a man. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Um, a, very, a verb meaning to be firm, to build up, to support, to nurture, or to establish. The primary meaning is that of providing stability and confidence. And I love this. This is where I love it. Like a baby would find in the arms of a parent. It's used to signify support of a pillar, nurture, a 
and nourishment, a nurse cradling in one's arms, a house firmly founded, a secure nail that finds a, pla a solid place to grip. All those scriptures, um, it's referring to different references there. You can um, actually pause, go back to this and look those references up. Um, but don't you love it? When it says, Abraham believed God and it was counted him as righteousness, I like just to take these pictures and say, what did Abraham do? It said, Abraham was like a baby in the arms of a parent. You know, like a baby, just trusting in the parent, being nourished and fed by that parent, like a pillar, strong and firm, like where I get nurture and nourishment. Um, it, it's, it's both support and strength, but it, it, it's, it provides me nourishment and peace and, and provision. Abraham, it said, said, you know what? I'm putting my trust in God. I'm believing in Him. I'm relying upon Him. So let's go back to our... Oh, don't know what happened there. Let's go back to um, our illustration. I give you the, credit card, uh, the gift card. I tell you there's a million dollars on there. You make a choice. You say, there is a million. You know why there's a million? Because He is reliable. Because He is trustworthy. And He is strong. And he is, I, I, put, I, I, re, I, I actually lean onto him and I believe what he says is on that card. Then I walk into the shop and I'll go grab those expensive shoes because I know those expensive shoes, you know, they're, they're $150, but that's nowhere near. I've got a million dollars on this card. And so when I walk up this time and they put it through, and they, I, they say, I'm sorry. I say, oh, no, 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 you are in the wrong. They say, well, no, the card um, hasn't been accepted. I'm sorry, you need to take the shoes back. I said, no, no, I am buying these shoes because I know who told me what is on that card and I know exactly what he has said. And he has said there is enough for a pair of shoes. I said, get your manager. And he said, I'm sorry, sir, it's, 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 it, this machine is not accepted. I said, get the manager. The manager comes and the manager says, I'm sorry, that, you know, we've tried this and it's not working. I say, ring the bank. Ring, do something. He said, you know why? Because I, I believe who gave me this card and what he has said, and he does not lie and he does not um, do things in jest and, and tell me things that are not true. There's a million dollars on this card. Find out what is wrong with your system because the card is right. Find out what is wrong and I want satisfaction. So they go away and they ring the, the bank and they do and they come back to me. And guess what eventually they say? So we are so sorry. We have wasted your time. You're exactly right. We, we, have, we have processed this wrong. We are not doing it the right way. We haven't put this code in. This, there is more than enough money on this card for this item. And here, you can have the shoes. And that's where a lot of Christians fall down is they don't legizomai what has been put into their account. They have a vague, two things. They either think that um, behind this, I am a sinner with nothing to my account. I'm actually, um, I actually don't deserve any nice shoes. I don't deserve nothing because I've, I've got a bad, I am, I am in debt. <laughs> How can I buy a five dollar pair of shoes? Because I'm a million dollars in debt. I'm I'm terribly. I'm, I'm so it was like I, I appreciate this, but my the real card I swipe is my card, and I'm in debt. And so even if I get over that and say, okay, well I'm going to use Jesus' card. Jesus has forgiven me. Jesus has enabled me. Jesus has blessed me. And then I go beep. And you know what? This is how it works. I Jesus says, I have forgiven you. You are forgiven. It's on my uh, legizma. It's been put on your account. It is. The, you remember when in, in Isaiah it says, "Though your sins were as scarlet, now they're as white as snow, as pure as a, you know, a new shorn sheep." Or something, you know, that they're really bright white. You know, that's what it's saying. Your your sins were were red like scarlet, but now they've been washed. That's saying the same thing. On your account was just a smear of the red of sin, but that's been wiped off, and you've been given a brand new account which is white and clean i've got a brand new account and i look at that and it's a million dollar account and on there it says forgiven i am forgiven and so i go to my emotions and i say how are we feeling today we go, i don't think we feel very forgiven i feel like a lousy you know i go i guess i guess i guess the card doesn't work for this 
I guess the card doesn't work for this, does it? I go and, and I say, well, I, you know, the Bible says to love my neighbor. I don't like my neighbor. In fact, you know, I hate my neighbor. In fact, <laughs> I can't help but speak badly about him and to him. And, you know, we, we, we'd, we'd get on terribly. And the Bible, I know the Bible says love him, but it doesn't obviously mean my neighbor. My neighbor, I can't love my neighbor. I don't have a nut. I don't have love in here for that neighbor. I don't have, you know, you just think of all the things that God has promised you. He's promised you to be able to walk in the, the, the graces of the Holy Spirit, the abilities and enablements of the Holy Spirit, love, joy, peace. He said, <laughs> how can I be happy when I'm going through what you know I'm going through? I tell you why, because legizomai to your account is joy. There's joy there. There's joy on your account. Yeah, but when I tried to spend it, I went for joy. It is me, 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 me. And I got the manager and he said, you can't have joy because you're just such a lousy person and you're a terrible sinner and you're never going to get any joy in your life with the life you're living. Me, me. You know what you need to do? Say, excuse me, excuse me. I believe what God has said about me. He has purchased for me joy in the Holy Spirit. I am a joyful person. He has forgiven me. He has purchased righteousness. He has purchased access to God. He has purchased boldness to, to come into the throne room. I know because legizomai is very exact. And this is where a lot of Christians get into difficulty. They don't legizomai what God has done. They have a vague idea. They have some, well, it would be nice if it's true. They say, I'll give that a try. I'll go and see if I can get forgiven. And they put up your hands. I don't feel very forgiven. So they say they give up. Instead of being able to buy faith, take and lock into what God has provided. It's called legizomai. It's exact. It's not what you want. It's not what you feel like. See, I, I don't say, <laughs> I feel really good, therefore I'm a millionaire. I don't care how you feel. <laughs> I wish I was a millionaire. I don't care whether you wish it or not. It doesn't make you a millionaire. What's on your account tells you what you are. So what you need to do is know exactly what he has put on your account. How do you do that? First of all, you look at Jesus and you see what was on his account because there's been the transfer. His righteousness has come unto mine. You look at the gift card that Jesus has and you see all the things that are on his account and that's been put to your account. You read the word of God, which is the, which is the um, expressing of all those things. That's why God says, look at Abraham. Abraham had nothing going for him. He had no son that he could have with Sarah. He didn't have it. But I said, this is what he's going to be. And I actually changed his name. This is one of the most powerful truths. I'm not going to speak about it now because um, I don't want to you know, get into something extra. But I'm just telling you, it's a powerful truth. God changed his name based on the legizomai. He called him Abraham, father of many nations, before Abraham had a child and with Sarah. They did not have the child of promise. He did not have one child of promise. He had Ishmael that he made himself out of his own way. But then this is 15 years later, or roughly 15 years later. And now he is not able to have a child himself. And it says, God called him Abraham. And legizomai changes who you talk about yourself, how you talk about yourself. I start framing my name and my conversation about what legizomai says. I walk around the shop and say, I have a million dollars. I walk up to the front counter and say, I'm a millionaire. And they say, you don't look like a millionaire. <laughs> and they say, well, I am. You know why? Because it's on my account. And you speak about yourself and you have, and when you meet resistance, you by faith, you say, no, 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 no. This is what God has said. I am more confident in what God has said than what I feel or what I'm going through. So this is why legizomai is, um, is such a key word to me. Legizomai. It's all about exactness. Let me read to you from Thayer, um, the Greek dictionary. This has been around a long time. It's a, a, a classic, well-known Greek dictionary. And... Um, and um, let me just read to you what legizomai, according to his definition, is. It's to reckon, to count, to compute, to calculate. And this is from Thayer's Dictionary. This word deals with reality. If I legizomai or reckon that my bank book has $25 in it, it has $25 in it. The word refers to facts, not suppositions. That's from the Thayer Dictionary. I love it. You know, so sold. Twenty-five dollars back then. That was a lot of money. 
Nowadays, you know, you can just imagine if my bike bank account says I've got, a, you know, $250 in or $2,000 in it. It's, it's not a supposition. It's what it has. It's legizomai deals with facts. And, um, oh, sorry, I didn't. Legizomai is where we started. It deals with the, the reality of the situation. This is what I have. This is who I am. And you can't, it's not what you want. You know, some people say, you know, oh, you just talk about prosperity because you want to be, you know, prosperous. You know, actually, I don't talk about prosperity because I want to be prosperous. I talk about prosperity because legizomai, when I discovered that it's in my account, I am committed to legizomizing everything Jesus puts on my account. I don't, you know, my, my job isn't to sort of work out whether I will or won't. If it's on my account, that's what I'm putting to practice. That's what I'm going to do. So legizomai is the practice of going to the Word of God and learning all that Jesus has put into my account because of His righteousness. And it's a work of grace. It's a work of trust. The same way that He was able to take sin, not by doing anything, but by just putting it on Himself through faith. I take righteousness on me by faith, not by my works, not by my actions, and not by my own strength. I trust God. And then I embrace it, and then I walk on it. So, Oh, sorry, don't want that on there. So how do we, I just want to summarize this. Legizomai, I challenge you. Commit yourself to knowing what God has given to you, what God has paid for you, what God has transferred to you. Look at it as a fact and as a, an account. Not something you want or wish or desire, but something that you must hold to and then you implement it. Then you learn by the Holy Spirit. You say, now, Holy Spirit, help me to activate this. It, remember, it's the fruit of the Holy Spirit. He will help you to bring these fruits out. He will give you the wisdom and grace and help needed. He will empower you to do what he says. So I'm not just saying just legizomai, that's all you need. No, you need the Holy Spirit to help you. But it, you need to be as confident and bold as someone who's looking at an accounting spreadsheet. You need to say, I am righteous, righteous, I am forgiven, I'm healed, I have shalom, I have God's presence and peace, I have his goodness and his mercy poured out of me. Goodness and mercy follow me all the days of my life. How can you say that? Because Legizomai tells me that he is my good shepherd and I can declare, he, makes, he gives me favor, he gives me grace, he gives me blessings, he has taken me from the curse, to, I am now called blessed. All these things are because we live as am I. So I hope that's been as, um, as encouraging to you as I've enjoyed being able to share it afresh because um, I just um, love talking about this concept, this word, legizomai. Uh, let me just pray for you. Father, I thank you for everyone listening, all those now that, um, Lord, are hearing these words. I pray that they would know, Father, what you have done for them. First of all, Father, I pray for anyone who has been watching, they're just sitting there and they've just come across this and you don't even know about Jesus. Well, I want to just tell you, Jesus has paid a price for all the things you've done, the sins you've committed, the wrongs you've done, and he has taken that on himself. And I'm challenging you, find out more about how you can receive Jesus and that righteousness. You can be a forgiven, cleansed, healed person, a whole person. I pray for every believer here that's been watching, that Lord, they would become, um, that they would receive revelation Things of that that you say would become revelation, and they would hold to that. They would become firm with to that. They'd become like bulldog faith, grip it and say, "That is mine in Jesus." And they would see the provisions of God flow in their life in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God bless you. I really appreciate um, sharing this time with you.